Hello guys, welcome back to Watch Time. Today's movie recap will be in a crime, action, and thriller movie from 2023 called The Locksmith. Warning, there are spoilers ahead. On a still night, a dishonest police officer named Zwick told his junior, Miller, to crack open a safe. At that time, Miller was with his close friend, Kevin. Zwick handed them a blueprint of the safe and they hurried to the site. Miller quickly unlocked the door with a special tool he had. Following Zwick's blueprint, they drilled into the wall and opened the safe, finding money inside. However, a motion sensor installed by the owner alerted the police to their break-in. Kevin panicked. Meanwhile, Zwick, aware of the burglary report, pretended to investigate despite orchestrating the whole scheme. Upon arriving, Zwick shot his car, then fatally shot Kevin without a word, and staged the scene to mislead other officers into thinking Kevin attacked him. Miller, seeing Zwick's betrayal, was furious, but Zwick remained indifferent and threatened to arrest Miller, even threatening his family. Helpless, Miller was eventually imprisoned. A decade later, Miller was released and met by his old friend Frank, who offered him a locksmith job. Grateful, Miller accepted, planning to use his skills lawfully. Miller reached out to his wife, Beth, and daughter, Lindsay, whom he hadn't seen in 10 years. They met at a cafe where Miller apologized for his past and Beth forgave him, allowing him to reconnect with Lindsay. Beth preferred not to live with Miller yet, but they agreed to keep a positive relationship. The following day, Frank woke Miller up with news of a job from a client leading them to work on locks in a fancy residential area. After finishing, a rich man named Garrett, who owned the place, approached Miller. Impressed by Miller's locksmith skills, Garrett wanted to hire him for all of his properties as long as the work was legal and Miller agreed. Returning to the workshop, Miller was met by a woman he didn't recognize. She revealed herself as April, Kevin's sister, and explained her financial troubles asking for Miller's help. Feeling guilty over Kevin's death, Miller was open to helping but refused when April suggested stealing. April was upset by Miller's refusal and left abruptly. Frank, who overheard their conversation, warned Miller against giving in to April's illegal request. The next day, while Miller was driving to work, a police officer stopped him. Soon after, Zwick, the corrupt officer, arrived. Zwick mentioned his upcoming retirement and introduced the two accompanying officers. One of Zwick's men assaulted Miller and found a key typically used by burglars. They took the key to their superiors as evidence, but it was deemed insufficient for rearresting Miller. Later on, Miller was questioned by his wife, Beth, who worked as a police officer in their town. Miller explained how Zwick and his team had approached him. Soon after Zwick went to see the police chief regarding the key recovered from Miller, the police chief came out and told Miller he could leave because there was no evidence Miller had committed any crimes. When Miller got back to the workshop, Frank cautioned him to stay vigilant, and Miller assured him he wouldn't revert to his old ways. Meanwhile, at the police station, a retirement party was being held for Zwick. He then asked Beth to come to his office and offered her his position, only to influence her even after his retirement. Beth was unsure at first because she didn't feel qualified, but Zwick and his associates persuaded her and she accepted the role. Switching back to Miller, he was practicing his lockpicking when Beth called him to pick up their daughter Lindsay from school because she was tied up with work. Miller was happy to do it. After picking up Lindsay from school, they went to the park to eat and then visited Miller's workshop where he showed her how to pick a lock. She managed to do it after some instruction. Later, they went to Beth's workplace at the police station. Beth thanked Miller for spending the day with Lindsay. Back at the workshop, Miller found April waiting for him. She told him her boss was a terrible person and revealed she had become a comfort woman after Kevin's death. Showing Miller her injuries from her boss, she asked Miller to steal money from her boss so she could escape and start anew in a different city. Hearing her story, Miller agreed to the heist, declaring it would be his last. After securing the money, he told April to leave him be. April agreed to Miller's condition. Afterwards, April informed Miller about her boss' residence and mentioned he was hosting a party that night, suggesting Miller undertake the theft then. At the police station, Beth, now leading the department, was reviewing unresolved cases involving sex workers and began to doubt Zick's effectiveness during his tenure. As the party at April's boss's house commenced with April in attendance, Miller arrived. He surveyed the area and easily broke into the house. 
Unknown to Miller, Swick was also at the party, now working for April's boss. Swick spotted someone acting suspiciously and went to investigate. Miller had already assessed the main room holding the money. After retrieving the cash, he encountered Zwick, leading to a fight. Although Miller had the chance to shoot Zwick, he chose not to and fled, leaving behind a bag of lockpicking tools which Zwick found. Attempting to escape, Miller used April as a decoy to distract the guards. He managed to leap over a wall and escape. Garrett, April's boss, was infuriated by Zwick's failure to catch the thief and demanded he retrieve the stolen money. Miller concealed the money in a safe at the workshop and tried contacting April, who didn't respond. The next day, Miller discovered April's house in disarray, fearing she might have been abducted. Meanwhile, Beth had a visitor, a colleague of April's, who provided a flash drive of evidence of Garrett's crimes, implicating Zwick and two other corrupt officers. Back at the workshop, Frank confronted Miller about the previous night's events. He criticized Miller's reckless decision, but understood it was to help April. Frank advised Miller to resolve the situation quickly and distance himself from April once he had helped her. In her office, Beth was ready to present the flash drive containing crucial evidence to her higher-ups. One of Swick's associates, curious about what had Beth had, inquired about it, but she downplayed its significance. The police chief already informed about the contents of the flash drive, decided to bide their time before apprehending the involved criminals and store the evidence in his desk drawer. Later, Miller visited Garrett's place again to learn of April's whereabouts. Garrett claimed ignorance about April's location. Suddenly, Garrett attacked Miller with a pool cue. Miller fought back, eventually forcing Garrett's head underwater in a swimming pool to force him into revealing April's location. Under duress, Garrett said that April was with Zwick. As Miller left hurriedly, April and Zwick, who were watching from afar, revealed they had manipulated Miller to steal Garrett's money for them. Zwick then entered Garrett's house and fatally shot Garrett. Back at the garage, Frank continued to urge Miller to stop his risky way. Beth and Lindsay then arrived at the workshop. Miller confided in Beth about Zwick and the corrupt officers at her station. Beth disclosed she was already aware and possessed the incriminating evidence. Aware of Miller's recent actions, she requested the stolen money to use as additional evidence against the culprits. Miller complied, handing over the cash to Beth. At the police station, two corrupt officers sought the flash drive in their chief's desk. Meanwhile, Zwick and April, now at a hotel, were disrupted by a call from Zwick's accomplices informing him of the precarious situation as Beth and the authorities had uncovered their crimes on the flash drive. Although they had managed to retrieve the flash drive, Zwick, Enraged, ordered his men to eliminate Miller immediately. At the workshop, Miller received a warning call from April to flee. However, before he could escape, corrupt officers arrived and ambushed him, resulting in Miller being shot in the leg. Frank attempted to defend and managed to take down one assailant, but was fatally shot in the process. The attackers then took Miller's daughter, Lindsay, as leverage to demand the stolen money from Miller, who then fled with her. Beth, upon hearing about the shootout at Frank's locksmith shop, headed back to the scene. Upon arrival, she learned from Miller that Lindsay had been kidnapped. Soon after, Zwick contacted Miller, demanding the return of the money in exchange for his daughter's safety. Zwick's men later brought Lindsay to April. April expressed her displeasure at involving a child in their schemes. Miller and Zwick agreed to meet for the exchange. Upon arrival, Zwick demanded the money before releasing Lindsay. Miller dropped his weapon and the money to Zwick. Meanwhile, at the hotel, a corrupt officer was searching for April, who was unresponsive and who had seemingly fled. Lindsay, using the skills her father taught her, managed to unlock her handcuffs. As she attempted to escape, Beth, who had stealthily entered the hotel to save her daughter, intervened by fatally shooting the corrupt officer, chasing Lindsay. Back at the meeting point, despite receiving the money, Zwick intended to kill Miller, However, April intervened, shooting Zwick dead. Despite this, April was still resentful towards Miller, blaming him for her brother's death and aiming to kill him. Beth intervened, pointing her gun at April. Miller expressed his deep regard for Kevin, likening him to a brother which moved April to tears and led her to surrender her weapon. The police arrived soon after to secure the scene and April was taken into custody. Following these events, Beth was promoted to lieutenant. At Lindsay's school piano recital, she played beautifully. 
earning the audience's applause. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe. Take care and see you next time.